Hello friends, have you been wondering whether this 2015 Millennium Falcon is a good Millennium Falcon? Is it worth buying at the retired price? Find out just those questions and so much more in this video. We're going to cover the ins, the outs, the good, the bad, everything. But first we got to get into features, the details. But uh, it had a good box. I, uh, of course, since it's a retired product, I've had it for some time. Uh, I don't have the box anymore. But it has a good instruction book covered, match the box art pretty good, which I will show you. Unfortunately, I can't get too close, but just like that. And it had instruction book had about two, one, let's see here. It had 160 pages. Uh, and the set retailed at the time 180. 50 US dollars and right now you'll be lucky to find one that's under 260 that is just the way the retired market it's not terrible for being a you know the eight year nine year retired product project set but uh, it was for ages 9 to 14 and had 1300 and 30 pieces. It is set number 75105, the Millennium Falcon from Force Awakens. You have the, a good a good amount of minifigures. It has what, nine? No, seven? Two, four, seven minifigures in this set. A pr pretty heavy cast of minifigures. Most Millennium Falcons only have like five. So, we're doing pretty good here. I'm pretty good with the minifigures. I'm gonna cover all the details on the close-up scenes. Okay, here we are on the close-up. We're gonna start with these minifigures. I'm gonna set them aside and do each one individually and hope that my camera can focus. We got BB-8 here, really nice print uh, all the way around his body. Uh, unfortunately, he doesn't roll like the character does in the movie. It's uh, studded on the bottom and he just kind of bounces around. Um, so I think I would have preferred not having a stud on the bottom, but then like kind of making him like a soccer ball uh, with a stud on the top. But that's great. Uh, each side is slightly different. Let's go back around here. You know, the print on the back side is slightly different. You know, it's different positions and whatnot, showing his different compartments and whatnot. And there you get a better view of that head. Pretty detailed. Set this back down. Here we got uh, one of the gang members. He's got a little eye patch. He's got a little beanie. And what I really love here is the continuous print. So there's not really a space. Like they do the hip print and they do the leg printing. But the, the torso print continues all the way down into the legs. No toe printing, but that's okay. I don't think that was needed. He's got a little rifle musket thing. And then you got, you got a grenade printed there. I'm gonna turn him around kind of slowly. Get a good, uh, no arm printing. Nothing on the side of the legs. And you got some pretty detailed back printing there. Pretty good for just a, you know, like gang member. They spent some really good detail on them. Here we have Tasso Weech. One of the pretty good. And I, I love that they're head prints. You don't get it. We haven't gotten a lot of like Spanish or true Spanish Lego minifigures. And these guys uh, Lego did a really good job at capturing that really nice skin color. As well as you know, being really accurate to the characters. Uh, he has two pistols. I'm going to take those set those aside. His hairpiece is really nice, uh, using that Qui-Gon Jinn hairpiece. That I think this color was used for uh, Bard the Bowman in the Lord of the Rings series. Okay. Let's put this just a hair. So you can kind of see his torso print is a little bit better. Uh, he's got continuous kind of printing. He didn't really print his hips, so it, you know, there's a little bit of spacing. But it still looks like this continuous print to put the belt print up. I do like when they do uh, hip 
right on that hip piece they do the belt print often Han Solo has gotten that we're gonna turn them around to the back nice and slowly the hair piece is gonna be slight in the way so we are gonna remove that if it will let me there we go there's a the second face and it's detailing on the back there we are I'll set them aside Next up, we got Finn, FN2. He's got a good hair piece that I really like. I think it works for him. He's got a blaster, no printing on the legs. Uh, he's got that jacket printing that he got from Poe with the Stormtrooper bodysuit uh, underneath. And the printing does a good job of capturing that. We're gonna go to the back here, and he's got, you know, some pretty good back printing. And if I move his hair piece, he's got his stern look, he a different face. So double face printing, looks pretty good. Okay, and she has the silver uh, blaster that Han gave her, or gives her eventually. And she's got that continuous printing as well that I really like. Uh, there's no really gaps, there's no just plain color. Uh, they print the hips, print the legs, it's just continuous. She's got her unique hair piece with the three bun. And you got some back printing there. And I'm pretty sure a second face. Yep. You know, kind of that sterner look. You know, slightly mad, that kind of stuff. She looks pretty good. Now, we got everyone's favorite smuggler, Han Solo. Now, he is printed in reddish brown. And if you don't know what happens with reddish brown, it gets really stiff and brittle. And so my Han, since he's eight, ten, eight years old or so, his arms are really stiff and brittle. They aren't cracking yet, but they're bound to be. He has the newer, uh, I got out of focus apparently. All right, we have everyone's favorite smuggler, Han Solo here. He's got the black pistol. It looks pretty accurate to the kind of weapon that he uses. Uh, there are better ones on the uh, custom market. I'll go ahead and remove that so you can kind of... Got his torso. He's got the brown jacket and white shirt, classic Han Solo. He's got some leg printing here. That looks pretty good. Pretty accurate. It's got the gun print on it. Going to the back, it's pretty minimal, but it looks pretty good. And um, if you remove his hair, he's got a second face. One thing to note, because he is older, he's more brittle. So when you move his arms and such, she's stiffer and they it, he's that reddish brown that was pretty brittle i have a few mini figures that have cracked because of that there we have everyone's favorite wookie he's got his bow caster and pretty simple printing and coloring i do wish like would make a new molded bow caster that didn't have the stud but i understand for playability why it's there just some tan mixed with brown he's got his printed bandolier and the bandolier is printed on the back as well. They didn't used to do that. Like, it's a decent mold. It works really well. And here we are. My Chewbacca is also very stiff, as well as Han Solo. And we're gonna take off. Uh, this is where the tricky part is. This cockpit is very tight. So we'll see how this goes. Now, Chewbacca has very stiff legs, so. That is a problem. It was, I thought the reddish brown was supposed to be fixed by this current year, but mine still are having issues. We're gonna put Chewbacca, and we're gonna go ahead and put Han right next to him. You gotta put Chewbacca's arm down though. And you're gonna put Han kind of forward, nose right up here. Probably not, but there's supposed to be a black or a clip at least there that I misplaced somewhere 
here. All right, I'm gonna come to right here. We'll back it up so you can see the bottom. I'm gonna pop the ramp can lower. And again, what is always the issue for me is that this always seems way too low. Is they should hit their head here. So like another stud or two higher and it's perfect. The scale is, it would be nice if they just made it a little bit taller. I think, I think that would be kind of fun. And for playability purposes and all that. I also think that putting the, designing uh, the hydraulic system that's on there uh, would also be a really good detail to add. But at last they don't do that. Uh, I'm gonna turn this around. I'm gonna go over this engine. You have this really nice engine. It would be really easy to grab a light kit and light it. It has light that kind of comes through the gapping. It makes it look like. But it is a hard piece to kind of get to uh, stay attached. Uh, that is the one downside. You'll also notice right here that I don't have a clip. And that is because the clip broke. So the clips here are a little bit fragile. And they don't hold the stress for uh, too long. Lego's pretty good about replacing these or they're pretty cheap to go ahead and replace yourself for a couple of cents. But just be aware that over time they will snap on you. I'm gonna turn this up for you. You got turrets right here on the bottom. This plate does not lift off. You got the four landing gears. Hopefully you can see that because I can't quite tell. I think the next best thing to come up, I'm trying to manage this. So right here, we have the top turrets. You can go 100 points straight up. They stay in pretty well. They do, they will fall off if you push these in too far. But then you can lift it up right here. And you got there. And that you can see too many figures to go inside the gun turrets. Alright, there it's kind of focused. And I apologize if it gets out of focus. But sit Finn and Ray are gonna be on the guns. It's a little bit particular on getting them to bend and get their heads to meet. And then you just drop them back in. And then the hatch closes. Just got to get their weapons out of the way. You got the square radar dish. Uh, it is a sticker, unfortunately, and not printed. That's somewhere where Lego should have printed. Before we get inside, I want to go over and see something that Lego does is does fix and has fixed. And I may have customized. This might have been. I don't think that was supposed to be there. So I've tried to customize to close up these gap. But there's a lot of gapping, just a lot. So that, that's one thing that these uh, haven't done real well with, is the Millennium Falcons, is they create the circle look, but they don't, they have a lot of gapping, which bothers some adult collectors as well. But one thing this set does really well is these chairs. Like, I love how these look. And since I don't have any other minifigures available, I'm gonna put our glove in game in here, but you just sit them on these studs, and hopefully this isn't, sh which I can't do, seem to do with one hand, there we go, you, you sit them in there, the toss loops just won't sit, so I apologize for that on the shaky camera, but you can sit them, and these can close, I think that these are just one stud higher. I'm not sure which review is going out. I'm reviewing both my Millennium Falcons right now. I don't know which one's going to be out first. If this one is out last, then I've reviewed the 2018. You know, no, that I uh, don't like that it was too short to close with minifigures. Like, 
This was my first Millennium Falcon. Oops. At the time it was only one bill. You've got the medic bay, and you got the hard drive right here. And on this one, um, let's see how there is your cargo hatch, your smuggler bay. And then you have your, this right here is your loading ramp. And you've got clips for mini f uh, weapons and tools. And you got some crates right here. And that is pretty much it for the inside. And you got the front right here. It has some nice greaveling. I added some greaveling. It has good greaveling along the sides. And you have spring loaded shooters. You press right in these front, either this hole or this hole, and you get one to launch right out. And that is it for that Millennium Falcon. That's going to be it for this review. And I'll see you in the next video.